forecast. We're going to take a look at uh, two modules, the heavy lifting for, um, for some proof of concept functionality I have going right now of getting the MOOC distribution to talk to the course information system distribution. So the two modules you definitely want to check out is RESTWS. Uh, this is for creating RESTful web services. What that does is basically if you type .xml off of any node in your site or user account or anything else for that matter, uh, you'll be given the XML output of that information. Uh, you, can, you can also do JSON. It has built-in support for JSON. Um, it's also queryable, and it works with any entity type. So, for example, field collection item. Um, I could say here, give me a list of all the field collections in my site, and this is all the field collections. Um, I mentioned it's queryable, so I could also do, in this case, uh, which I'll show in the demo here, field access string equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will only return field collections that have field access string 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So very similar to views type functionality, except um, you're just structuring your site calls that way. Um, you can also do this with nodes. Uh, so if I wanted all the courses that are in our system, I could theoretically give this address to someone. Now, you're not going to give this out to you know, random web services. Um, I have removed the usernames and passwords from different fields, but trust me when I say that I'm doing secure connections between two different systems for what I'll demo today. Uh, so what our use case is, we want to get all of the information that needs to be out of a, a central location, in this case, the management of courses for our college. And so you'll see we have this mapped out as content types. Uh, we've got a content type for course. A course has field collections, and some of those field collections are offerings. So a course has offerings. And then within an offering, which is, you know, like fall 2012, there are sections of a course. So, uh, you know, section one, section two, section three, some of them are at different campuses. Some of them are at the same campus, just split out because of number of enrollments. So what we're trying to do then is have all this information be centralized. It's very important that we're able to manage this in one place, but yet use this information in a big data sense uh, to power a lot of the decision making in other systems. Uh, so very simple use case is that we're trying to demonstrate here. Oh, two of them. One is we want to give a student the syllabus to a course by, you know, a logical web address, right? So syllabus, if I spell that right, right? So we want to try and make it so we can create one address that will always give the correct syllabus. And now, right now, you upload a file, uh, you create a link to a file. And that works, but we want to try and reduce the overhead and the management of that. So what we have is this Art 10 space. And you'll see at the bottom here, we have this download syllabus. Now, for starters, if I go and I hit edit, you'll see there isn't actually a download syllabus link. So there's code generating that. Um, let's look at that code real quick. So we've got this dummy module at the moment. And so I'm doing a very goofy thing. I'm targeting node 188 and saying, hey, make a request to the course information system. Uh, this is a query to send. I know that it's a field collection is where this information lives. And so what would happen, the hope would be, is that we would probably have like user profile fields, right? And so that we would just have user field my section or something like that, right? Which actually stores a unique identifier of what section the student is in. Then we can query off of that, query our course information system, and in this case, return a link to the syllabus. So uh, to step through this, this is saying, hey, make a connection, give me the field collection item. And then it looks in the field collection item for the uh, identifier that links to a file. So in this case, the PDF of the syllabus. And then it says, pull that if you were able to pull it, which means it found a match, then we're going to add a download syllabus link. Right? And we're going to do it at the file URL that was located. So again, for this silly example, we have one, two, three, four, five. If we go back here, you'll notice the download syllabus.pdf is actually some fake uh, file over on online.ana.pcio.edu. So if I go over there, we'll see that there's actually a field collection record here uh, of type section that has an access string of one, two, three, four, five. Now, if I remove this, and we'll say we'll make that one, two, three, four. 
I'll go back over here and refresh, it doesn't find it, right? So the query no longer matches and no longer returns any results. So the goal is that we would have things well structured, everyone that's related to the setup and delivery aspect of the course uh, would put all that information in one place. Uh, we could do LTI launches against this system and then have it go and do other things. Uh, centralize all that big data management stuff so that we can deliver a high quality product, if you will. <laughs> so to show that that is querying differently or show what that actually would be querying, if I'm in this system, I do field collection item.xml, field access string one, two, three, four, five. All right. So again, this is respecting Drupal permissions. Um, what I've done to connect this, I, I mentioned there is a layer of security, obviously. Um, there's a layer of security built into REST WS that allows for uh, service accounts, basically. So you make a role that's called service account or whatever you want, and then you create an account that's structured appropriately, and we'll show that, obviously. And so then you give it permission. So in this case, the web service has the ability to uh, get information about field collections, files, nodes, and WYSIWYG profile, which actually makes no sense. But it doesn't have the ability to grab information about a user. So we couldn't use the web service to query and get info about the user. Uh, you know, say that account somehow got compromised, people aren't going to be able to, to grab that information. So it's very important uh, to kind of have a well-defined security policy and limit it that way. So the second thing I'm going to show here is this. So this is using another project called Views XML Backend. And when you read it, it might not make a ton of sense, um, but my eyes lit up when I saw this. So I've been looking for something like this for a very long time. Basically, uh, similar to how feeds, you point at an XML address and then it ingests it and does something. Um, imagine pointing views at an XML address and having it display it and be queryable. So you can kind of bring um, just structured information to life visually. Uh, through the world of views. So to show my example here that I have, um, I have this thing called online connector, and we'll check out the view for that. There it is. And so I've got, I've got it securely generating the address, but what you would do is you would put a direct link to the XML file that you want to walk through uh, to visualize. Then you give it an XPath statement, which in this case, you know, my document is structured like XML, and then there's list, and then there's nodes in there. So this is saying every row, pull out, list, node, right? Then for fields, you actually add XPath statements, which is kind of interesting. So you do XML, and in this case, I do text, text in the XML file. It also does markup, which is really cool. Uh, so let's look at this one. So this is the title. The XPath selector is title because I know I'm looking at nodes, right? So basically what this is all doing is it's going to online.ana, right? And it's going to node.xml. And then it's going to take this information and present it back on the screen as a view. So in this case, you'll see I have, I told it, hey, put the node ID, put the title, the date that it was updated, content, which is the body of content. You'll see, so it is able to actually do that and format it appropriately, which is really cool. Um, and then I have it render an edit link uh, so that, you know, if you're an administrator, you could see that this information actually lives somewhere else and click edit still in a logical way and go over to that system and edit. Uh, we would probably want to tell people, hey, you know, you're editing something that's in a different site. Again, it's pervasive access thanks to our single sign-on system at the university. Um, so, you know, I click that link, it just knows who I am, I can get to it. Um, but it's also, it is, you know, respecting the permission. So it is just viewing the information. We're not doing any of the create, delete, update uh, type of operators. Uh, RESTWS has support for those. It doesn't make them available through the UI. You have to um, actually have the access to do it. So um, in the case of the web service, which I haven't given any of these permissions to, which is is very nice that you have that type of granularity. It does actually respect all node operations uh, contained in here. So, for example, if I gave the web service the ability to create, uh, well, this, these are fields. You can even get into field permission settings, which is um, very granular. But let's say I gave the service the ability to create courses uh, remotely. 
it could then have you know this this uh, course actually tell this system, hey, this course exists now. Um, we might use that in an instance where we do an LTI launch directly at our courses service and then want to update our online uh, information system. So you know, just some little things like that. We have to really get the workflows down that we want, but um, this views XML backend stuff is awesome. So you know, right now what this did is it went and said, hey, give me all the courses, but it did it through a very visual way um, and it's in views. So while I'm rendering this as a table, I could just as easily, you know, have maybe some relational data stored in that other system and pull it into this other site um, with a view and display it as a graph. I mean, we do that type of charting information in our online site already with college data. Uh, it would be just as easy to you know, make this information in scope of entity and then, you know, other web services at the university could tap into it. Now, we're not the authoritative source for this information, so that's not really, you know, a, a realistic use case, but again, just something we can do with it. So, uh, what I'm hoping to do with this, with the views and kind of mining this stuff to display, is create almost an internal discuss engine, if you will, if you're familiar with discuss commenting engine, uh, in which we have like a discussion at the College of Arts and Architecture that can be related directly to this page, similar in the way that node reference highlight can be used to, to add glossary terms. Uh, glossary is you know, very internally focused. I don't know that that needs to be a web service all of its own, but that we could actually have other web services start popping up over here. So even though you open this up and you see just a running conversation going on about this material, it doesn't actually live here. Um, the reason we're designing things this way is so that at any point in time, you could break off different components. You could upgrade independently. So my CIS, as long as it's returning structured XML, the courses system doesn't care what it is, right? This is a very similar approach to how Drupal.org works. I don't care that Drupal.org runs on Drupal 6. Um, my website still knows what the update you know, requirements are. It still knows, hey, this XML is coming through, and I'm up to date with everything. Same basic idea except that this then allows us to have, you know, theoretically we could have one service be Drupal, this course service start on Drupal, and then maybe it migrates to WordPress. As long as it's able to connect into uh, the same type of XML or JSON data, it's still a more useful system than if it was one system where we had to do global upgrades because um, you're never going to be able to keep up with, with the pace of change for global upgrades which is why you know, most technologies that are of the scale of an LMS fall behind the curve of what people's expectations are for the web. You, know, you can't build in YouTube functionality without adding it into the same application. You're going to be limited in what you can add in. 